Welcome to Mortgage 101. I appreciate you finding me when you're looking for your home search, looking to buy a home in Utah. There's no better time than purchasing real estate than today. And that a realtor is going to tell you that because you have seen interest rates go up and go down, property values go up and go down. And we always say we could have, should have bought this time, sold at this time. You're never going to hit that perfect time to purchase real estate or sell real estate. If you're in the position to purchase when it comes to credit, income, or assets for the down payment, then you need to buy as long as it's within your budget. Because that real estate that you buy today is only going to go up. Yes, will it go down? Absolutely. What goes up must come down, but it always goes always goes up. I remember my parents purchasing a property uh, back in the mid-70s for like $32,000. That property is worth over $700,000 today. So you're going to invest into real estate, which is a long-term investment for you. You don't buy it and six months later sell it unless you're a flipper. But if you're a homeowner looking to purchase a property and want to own your own home, then you need to explore your options today, regardless on what the market is doing. If you have the credit. So there's three things that you need to purchase property. You need credit. So you need a lendable credit score and lendable credit, it, which we're going to go into. Income. With traditional financing, you need verifiable income. I'm not talking the subprime, non-QM, which is non-qualifying mortgage. I'm talking the bulk of the business is traditional financing with Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, VA, FHA, and USDA. That's traditional financing, and they own the bulk of the market. Yes, is there some offbeat stuff that's a small portion of the market? Absolutely, and that's called, uh, we all know it by subprime, but today it's called non-QM. That does not fit in the box, the underwriting guidelines of the traditional lenders, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, USDA, VA, and FHA. So I'm going to talk nothing strictly but traditional financing. So you need credit and what's in the body of the credit. You need verifiable income that's going to be on tax returns, W-2s, and pay stubs, um, or any other supporting documentation that you can support, such as Social Security award letters, pension letters, retirement letter, and so on, rental agreements. So those are stuff that you can verify. And then the last is uh, down payment or funds to close escrow. You will need some sort of money to close escrow. And there's some great programs out there that do 100% financing as well as some down payment assistance programs called DPA, down payment assistance. But first, if you are looking to purchase a property and you haven't spoken to a mortgage professional, a licensed mortgage loan originator, we're called MLOs, mortgage loan originators. If you have not spoken to a licensed mortgage loan originator and you're speaking with your neighbor, your brother, your coworker, you're getting the wrong data because those individuals, if, if they're not in the mortgage business, they are not staying on top of the mortgage business happenings, what's going on in the mortgage business, the changes that are going on in the mortgage business. We're on top of this every single day, or we know we have the tools and the resources to look these changes up immediately. So don't listen to anybody outside the mortgage industry. Talk to somebody. So if you're looking to purchase a piece of property and you're not in the position to purchase now, at least you'll know where you stand and what you need to do to be able to buy in the future. So right now, let's go into credit. There's two parts of a credit report. Now, this is a mortgage-related credit report. Your credit scores that you get for free through your um, credit cards, your bank, Credit Karma, even even this is funny. The three credit bureaus, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax, will have a different credit score for you, even though we derive at the same pl place to get your mortgage-related credit scores. So if it's not a mortgage-related credit report, it doesn't matter what mortgage company you go to, we all have the same algorithms to get the credit score. If I have a six, if you get a 680 today and you go down the street to XYZ Mortgage Company today, you're going to get the exact same credit scores. Now, if things change in a couple weeks later in your credit score, yeah, we're going to get a different credit rating. But you can't go shop different mortgage companies to see if you're going to get a different credit score. They're mortgage-related credit reports, mortgage-related credit scores. You can have a lendable credit score, but what's in the body of the credit report can hinder you from buying a home. And that is judgments, collections, uh, repos, bankruptcy, foreclosures. So 
I've talked to many, many borrowers, consumers that, oh my God, I didn't know that was on there. They didn't know they had a collection from the city of uh, LA for a parking ticket or Cox Cable because they didn't return their um, cable box or Verizon because they didn't pay their last bill. They went over to T-Mobile. So if you don't know what's on your credit report, then you need to find out what's out on your mortgage-related credit report. Once we run it as a mortgage company, it's called a hard inquiry. We're, we're going to hit it because it's a credit score, a legit mortgage credit score. You're going to get some points taken away. But if you're looking to buy a home and you think you've got a lendable credit score, but no, do not know what's in the body of that credit report, this is a good time to fill a home loan application out, get your credit ran. And then you can speak with your uh, mortgage advisor, hopefully that's me, and we will go through your credit report and say, this is what you need to do, Mr. or Mrs. Borrower. Clean up this, take care of this, remove this, pay this off, settle with this, or heck, you're pretty good. Pay these bills down to increase your debt, um, your purchasing power by reducing your debt ratio, or pay these bills off so your credit score becomes better. So that's going to put you in the position to buy. And at least you get educated on what's going on with your credit uh, report, your mortgage-related one. So those one of the three ingredients to purchase is credit, credit scores, and also what's in the body of the credit report. It doesn't hurt. Yes, it's going to be a hard inquiry, but you can afford a hard inquiry to know what's going on with your mortgage-related credit report. Now, if you're a 780, 800 credit score, you know what you're doing. You know what you're paying down. You know what you're taking care of, and you stay on top of it. It's that individuals between that 580 and, and 680 that really need to massage a credit report a little bit to increase those scores that is lendable. A higher credit score is going to better your chances of getting a loan approval, better interest rate, and if you have to have mortgage insurance with conventional, it's going to help with the mortgage insurance um, monthly payments. So credit is everything. That's one of the three aspects. Income. You need to have employment or some kind of income coming in. Remember, this is traditional lending that I'm t speaking of. So you got W-2s. You have um, a Schedule C, which is a 1099 wage earner. You file a Schedule C. If you're a corporation, we need your um, uh, corporate tax returns, your K-1s, um, LLCs. We need all verifiable income, W-2s, pay stubs. If you're a W-2 wage earner, wage earner and have nothing else on your um, 1040s, your federal tax returns, such as rental income or dividend income or pension income um, or rental property or side business schedule C uh, income, then we don't need your 1040s unless you got all that on there and you need to be candid up front with us because we will find that out. Today's lending We'll find stuff out that you don't think we'll find out. We will find it out. So it's best to be candid and upfront with your mortgage loan originator and let him or her know everything about your income, everything about your credit, and everything about your assets because we're going to have to paper trail that. You may think it's daunting paperwork, but ask yourself, would you lend to your own self $500,000 to purchase a home without not verifying anything? No, you wouldn't. So... I wish it was easy. I wish it was streamlined. I, I believe you me. I think everybody in the sense industry wants it easy, but you got to look at the end user. You got to look at, we don't want to see what's happened in the, in the mortgage meltdowns that we have had over the years that I've been in this business. When I'm doing this um, podcast, uh, 20, October of 2022, we have great lending standards on their traditionals. Now we're not going to see what happened in 07 and 08. We're in a much better lending environment today than we were back then and that's because the industry took the necessary steps that we will hopefully not see that um, mortgage meltdown again but we got to have strong borrowers now we can't do anything with death divorce or a job loss that just stuff happens and you can sell the property you can refinance with the other individual out. There's tons of ways that we can salvage the property. Selling them is the best way, obviously, uh, to save your credit and save the home and save a mortgage meltdown. But you've got to have verifiable income. If you're a W-2 wage earner, the last two years, sometimes we can get away with the one year of W-2. But we need a two-year work history. Now, we got all sorts of incomes coming in. If you do not verify that income, we cannot use that income on traditional financing. W-2s. If you change job fields, that's okay. We're not, years ago, you must, if you were in a job field of less than two years, you were a bricklayer one day and then the, a banker the next day, you had to have two years of the banking experience to have that strong employment history. We don't care about that today. You just need a two-year work, verifiable work history. If you went to college 
and a nursing school, uh, an attorney school, we can use that as a two-year work history. If you've been on the job 90 days, but you have a degree in the field that you went into, we can use the work history. You need a degree, though. You need to have graduated. I don't care less if you graduate with a C plus or an A plus. We don't care on that average. As long as you got your diploma and you went to nursing school, we can use that two year of nursing school as verifiable um, work history because now you're a nurse and you're working 30 days or 90 days into the nursing field, then we can use that income. Okay, so the things like that is verifiable because you have your degree. You must have your degree in order to um, verify that two years. So the income, there's tons of ways you can get income today. Uber, uh, babysitting, tons of things, dog walking. I mean, tons of ways you can get income. If you are not claiming that income at, on your ten, uh, 1040s, we cannot use that income. It must be verifiable. And the last piece is assets. There's two programs, the VA and the USDA. You need no money down for the down payment. You do need money to open up escrow called an EMD, earnest money deposit. Do speak with your realtor about that on how much you want to open up escrow with. Um, but that money will be applied for the closing costs. And I'm going to have in the link below, I'm going to have a video on what it costs to purchase a home. And it'll be a video that you can look at on the different areas of what you need money for the down payment and the closing costs. So if you're looking at USDA, no money for the down payment. VA, you got to be a veteran, active or honorably discharged. 100% um, financing, no money for the down payment. Conventional, as little as 3% down. FHA, as little as 3.5% down of the purchase price. Purchase price on a conventional is um, $300,000, $9,000 down. 300000 FHA, $10,500 uh, down. So that's your down payment money, but you remember you got that secondary, which is your closing costs. We need to pay for trail the monies on where they're coming from. You can get it from a gift. You can get it from your stocks, bonds, IRAs, mutual funds, money markets, 401k. You can get money from those institutions for the down payment. But we got to verify where the funds came from. I, people resist me all the time. I understand that. If you're going to get a gift, it's called it from the donor. It's got to be from a family member. We need the bank statement from that family member. They may not want to give the whole entire bank statement up, but we need it. I believe you me. I, I want the path of least resistant resistance. Traditional financing, if you're going to get a, a gift of $10,000 from a donor, a family member, we need to pay for trouble where that $10,000 came from. We don't need two months. We just need one month. And what the underwriters are looking at is if that donor had $4,000 beginning balance and all of a sudden there's an ending balance of $14,000, where did the $10,000 come from? So they're going to want to verify that. So the account that the money's coming from have, must have a beginning balance um, of that statement to show that they have enough money to um, gift you um, for the down payment or and or closing cost. Um, if they get a pay stub, you know we can see all that that they it has increased and they've minimized their debts that one um, month. But if there's a large deposit, the underwriter is going to want to see that. You can draw from your 401k as long as your 401k allows it. We're going to need your terms of withdrawal. So you got to call your 401k provider and see if you can uh, withdraw money from that. Which uh, nine, out of nine times out of 10, you can. Um, sometimes they limit on how many loans you can have against your 401k. So you want to call them and look at your terms of conditions because that's what we're going to look at called terms of withdrawal. So you need some you need some money. I'm going to have a video below going go in detail on where the money comes from, what money, where the money goes to um, when buying a home because you got upfront costs, you got um, down payment costs to open up escrow, you got closing costs that goes to different entities. Um, but I like go into depth with you on that. Love to do that and connect with you. But if you're looking to purchase a home in the state of California, Arizona, Utah, or Nevada, call me. I love to talk to you about purchasing a home. We can go in detail. If you're not ready to buy now, you definitely will be in the position to purchase down the road. It's you that ha must take the steps to do that. I love to walk you through those steps and say, hey, this is what you need to do to purchase. If you cannot buy now, and you should always explore your option. If But if you know you have no money in the bank, you're making $36,000 a year, your credit scores are 500, you're long ways away. There's something you did that affected all those um, attributes that you need to really sit down and say, what do I need to do to be able to buy a home? And I tell people all the time, the biggest thing that, that I see on bank statements 
is how much people eat out, how much they order on Amazon or how much they, they just spend frivolous money when they're buying a home. Yes, you got to make some tough choices. It's tough. If you're limited on cash, look at your expenditures and go, I don't need to eat out. I don't need this brand new uh, pair of shoes. I don't need to go to this concert. Yes, those are all fun. Believe you me, I, I want to do them with you. But if you're saving money for a down payment on a property and purchase one, you don't need to buy a car two months before closing escrow. I, I get it all the time. If you're in a position to buy, stay in that position to buy or only improve your position to buy. Don't hinder it by going out and continue doing the spending. But you got to take a hard look at yourself and go, this is where I can cut my money so I can save more money. I can pay these bills off instead of going out to eat, settle with these creditors change maybe your deductions talk to your tax advisor about that um on your um on your income there's some things work overtime get maybe get in a bonus position start making more money there or overtime tips a bonus commission that you can increase your income to be able to put into that um asset bank statement that's going to increase um your ability to purchase because now you have the money to buy a home Unless you're looking at a USDA, there's a that's a great program. I'll stick a link below on um, about the USDA program. You can click to and and uh, watch a uh, video or a podcast on that. This is a great great program that's available and nationwide. So if you're looking to purchase in that state, call me. I love to connect with you. My name is Nathan Rufty. I'm a licensed mortgage loan officer in California, Arizona, and uh, Utah, and at the moment Nevada. So Call me. My all my information is below, but it's 909-503-5600. Love to connect with you. Talk to you about getting a a home. If you're not ready now, let's get you in the position to purchase. Thank you very much for taking the time. Like, share, and comment on the links below. Thank you. Have a great day.